In this lesson, I'll show you how to solve problems involving moment of inertia and angular momentum. The question reads, a hoop of mass 1.0 kilograms and radius of 0 0.25 meters is rotating in a horizontal plane with an angular momentum of 4.0 kilograms times meters squared per second. A lump of clay of mass 0 0.20 kilograms is placed gently on the hoop. What happens to the angular velocity of the hoop? Now as you can see underneath, I've written down some critical formulas. The very first formula that I wrote down is the rotational inertia formula, I is equal to m times r to the power of 2. Now depending on the way the object is rotating, this formula could change. And a list of other formulas is shown on your screen for reference. Underneath that we have the linear velocity, and linear velocity is calculated by taking the radius times the angular velocity. And that's represented by the Greek letter omega. And lastly, we have the angular momentum, L, and that's calculated by taking the mass times the radius times the velocity, and I've also written down that it's the same thing as the inertia times the angular velocity. And the reason for that is, I just want to drive it really quickly for you, is that if I were to replace this V, this factor V, with what it's actually equal to, R times omega, we end up getting M times R to the power of 2 times omega. And as you can see, m times r to the power of 2 is equal to i. So therefore, angular momentum L is equal to the rotational inertia i times omega. The way I'll tackle this problem is by first calculating the moment of inertia before the lump of clay is placed on the hoop. I'll substitute that value into here alongside the angular momentum that was provided in the question. The purpose here is to compare the angular velocities for before the clay was added and after it was added. If that's confusing to you, let me show you the math and it will become more clear. So let's start by finding the angular velocity before the clay was added. All right, we have L being replaced with 4.0 kilograms times meters squared per second is equal to I, and I is calculated by taking the mass of 1.0 kilograms multiplied to the radius of 0 0.25 meters, and that's all being raised to the power of 2. So this part right here represents I, and that's all being multiplied to omega. Let's go ahead and multiply those two out. 1.0 times 0 0.25 raised to the power of 2. So that's the right side of the equation. Then we divide both sides by what we just found. So 4.0 divided by the answer we just found, and we get 64. So 64 per second, and you can even write down radians per second if you like, but it's technically 64 over one second, is equal to omega, and we'll call this omega initial. So that's the initial angular velocity. Now we have to calculate the angular velocity after the lump of clay was added. So if the lump of clay is being added, then the mass is going to increase by 0 0.20 kilograms. This means that we have to redo this calculation, this one right here, where instead of 1.0 times 0 0.25 raised to the power of 2, it will be a sum of two moment of inertias. All right, so we have this one, which we will rewrite, and I'll ignore the units because I know what the end product will be, plus, and now we have a mass of 0 0.20, and the radius is the same, to the power of 2. So let's go ahead and find out our new angular velocity given this change, and then we can compare what happens. So 1.0 times 0 0.25 raised to the power of 2 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.25 raised to the power of 2. And that's our answer for the right side. And then we divide both sides of the equation by what we just found. So 4.0 divided by what we just found and we end up with a new omega, which we'll call omega final, and that happens to be 53 radians per second. As we would expect, the angular velocity has decreased because adding this lump of clay on the hoop vertically 
should reduce its speed, its rotational speed. And there you have it. That is how to answer questions involving moment of inertia and angular momentum.